So let's move to the third speaker. Uh, our third speaker is Do uh, Dr. Donna Gift Cavallo. Uh, the title of the talk is Multimodal Precision Imaging of Individual Human Brain at Ultra High Fields. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, many thanks for the invitation. Um, uh, so today I'm going to talk about um, our newly released open source uh, multimodal precision imaging data set that we have acquired at the Montreal Neurological Institute and Hospital um, in Montreal, Quebec. And I know that uh, today's session is about brain anatomy, but I'm also going to talk about um, function. Okay, so starting off with a bit of a background and the summary of the motivation for this work. Um, so we know that most uh, human MRI research is centered or uh, predominantly centered on group average data and it limits the specificity and clinical utility of this uh, uh, that, that it can offer. Um, however, uh, precision neuroimaging has emerged, as, has a powerful approach to uh, mitigate this issue because it um, prioritizes individualized uh, mapping of brain structure and function with high fidelity through the use of repeated as well as prolonged scans. And in fact, um, as shown in this study, um, the dense sampling of high uh, quality fMRI data um, is necessary for uh, high up to achieve like test retest reliability and can also help resolve the idiosyncrasy of uh, heteromodal networks such as the DMN as shown in this study. And employing a multi-state functional MRI to, uh, is also important or uh, yes, to, to better characterize the functional architectures. So for instance, uh, complementing uh, task-free investigations with, uh, sorry, Yes, task-free investigations with uh, task-based fMRI can uh, help uh, interrogate the brain responses to, um, to uh, different uh, uh, cognitive tasks. And um, also, uh, in addition, um, using movies, uh, as emphasized today in, er, today in the morning by Dr. Finn, has emerged as an um, ecologically valid par paradigm. Um, it, uh, for uh, both the task and resting state, because at one end it may be uh, it may lack constraints, but uh, on the other hand it may be overly specific. And multimodal structural imaging often capitalizes on diffusion imaging in order to study structural connectomes, um, and it is often complemented with measures of cortical thickness as well as a geodesic jet distance. Um, however, um, using quantitative um, MRI uh, sequences can actually um, provide a better physical characterization of the brain structure and function, uh, brain structure. So for instance, like T1 uh, relaxation mapping can um, distinguish highly myelinated regions from less myelinated ones, and this provide a window for in vivo uh, characterization of interest cortical structure. And harnessing the um, ultra high field neuroimaging at magnetic field strength of seven Tesla and above can um, actually enhance um, uh, spatial resolution. And um, in our field, uh, we have benefited and actually embraced open science practices um, through uh, data sharing initiatives. And in fact, large collaborative projects such as the Cuman Connecting projects are already available out there, but most of them are uh, either focused on in-depth sampling of functional scans um, or um, the structural scans, but mainly focused on studying subcortical structure. So to fill this gap, we released this uh, open source data set. We call it Precision Neuroimaging and Con Connectomics, or PNI data, data set. So this is a data set from 10 healthy individuals. Um, that were scanned at the seven, uh, with the seven Tesla MRI across three sessions. So for this acquisition, uh, participants and had undergone four distinct, distinct structural scans. Namely, we have here the MP2 rage um, sequences, which have, or 
which uses universal uh, pulses to optimize the B1 uniformity. We also have uh, two sets of diffusion MRI that is useful for um, uh, studying structural connectomes as well as fiber architectures. We have the myelin sensitive magnetization transfer or MT on and off. Um, and lastly, we also have an iron sensitive sequence, which is the T2 star weighted multi echo gradient echo sequence. Um, participants also had undergone five uh, distinct functional scans, and, this in, and they are all multi echo in, the, in nature. Um, so first, like they had undergone like three sets of resting state, and also we collected data uh, while subjects perform memory tasks, namely the episodic and semantic retrieval tasks, which is also based on an open source validated protocol that was developed in my lab. And finally, um, we also collected uh, data while subjects watch movies in order to track or, and this allows us to track like hemodynamic activity during naturalistic viewing conditions. And so together with the raw uh, data, we also released the processing derivatives. Um, as you can see in here, um, it, it provides like surface-based neuroimaging features. So for instance, for the amputorage uniform image, we can derive cortical thickness um, and different contrast map from the different quantitative MRI. We also provide interregional connectomes uh, as shown in here. And we, uh, from these connectomes, uh, we just generated gradients, which is essentially it's a compact way in describing the spatial uh, patterning of the cortical organization. And you can see that the different connectomes um, can generate or provide different patterns of gradients. And so for this data set, we also have um, done uh, many, many uh, technical validations. Um, so the first one is that we check the image quality of the uniform image as well as the MT on and off and T2 star using the contrast to noise ratio and we found no outliers, that's in panel A. And then for panel B, we also estimated the total movements for each volume and also for each cell. And um, this, is cons like, this is from the first volume and it's consisted across two sessions. And finally, in panel C, we also um, inspected the frame-wise displacement from uh, the five functional scans, and this is from the optimally combined echo, and as well as uh, the TSNR, which is uh, basically calculated from um, the mean time series divided by the standard deviation. Um, our multi-session data set also um, allows for test retest re reliability. So we had like an exemplary, exemplary analysis from the structural uh, sequences. So we generated like microstructural profile covariances from our T1 map. And this is shown on the upper panel on the middle. Um, and then also a demon connectivity from our resting state functional connectome uh, on the lower middle panel. And uh, for both features, uh, we show a very high interest uh, subject reliability. This is higher than inter subject reliability. Um, and this, and it has also like high um, reliability, in, which mean, which suggests that um, there's a like the DMN patterns and also the MPC, MPC patterns from our ultra high field uh, data set is reliable and distinct, but also preserve inter individual differences. So um, by providing this data set, we hope that um, it will become an invaluable resource for the researchers that aims to understand. Um, to, to advance our understanding of the structural and functional relationship in the human brain. Um, and everything that I talk about today is now available as a preprint. I also put in here the, um, uh, the, the, um, the link where you can download the raw and the process data. Uh, please get in touch if you are interested in using our data. Uh, my email is over there. I also have put like the main poster. It's going to be on Wednesday and Thursday and all the others that are either like uh, process, like it's a processing pipeline um, or uh, others that use the data like investigating su superficial white matter, or cort cortical folding and the likes. Um, but I just like to end by uh, thanking um, everybody. It took a village to complete this project, but um, re really thank you to Boris, my supervisor, he's sitting over there and a lot of my lab members are here as well, our fantastic collaborators and thank you all for listening. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. Uh, well, 
maybe I can start. Maybe in 70 ephemera, usually the kind of bigger signal dropout area. Then in this data, then maybe you acquire data for multi echo. Maybe you can just see some signal at a shorter, some echo, such that data. Do you have any comments about maybe some signal quality or spatial coverage or maybe some difficult area like amygdala, uh, anterior temporal pore? Uh, yes, indeed, we had like signal dropouts, but in the first echo, which is around like 10 seconds, that's bright signal, um, the combined echo is still better than the first one. Oh, okay. And, and uh, like as we saw in the TSNR maps earlier, you could really see the dropouts, but um, that's, I think, uh, like the, the combined echo is still better. Okay. Thank you. Uh, okay. Any other questions? Well, in, in general, I think getting diffusion data from 70 is not kind of very straightforward, but I think this diffusion data also acquired with 70, so do you have any comments about diffusion data quality? Uh, in terms of like the resolution or? Yeah, well, maybe diffusion, uh, yes, for example. So like in, so this is a multi-shell um, data, and um, it, it's well known in the community that there's like a big dropout on the temporal regions, like. Um, and really, um, that's one of the biggest caveat of this like data set, and I think every 70 diffusion data set. Um, but we can, and that's why it, there's like, it's multi-sequence structural imaging, so we can complement the measures from the different um, sequences. Any other questions? All right, and the time is up. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you.